well, growing up in Pittsburgh has molded me into who I am today because there are a lot of creatives, a lot of jazz legends who come from Pittsburgh. And, you know, growing up in a home where my mom and dad had records and they would play, you know, like the classic Stevie Wonder, you know, your Luther Vandross. So, I, I mean, things like that. I always, and James Brown, of course. So I always grew up around like really, really good music and it just stuck with me all the way up until now. And I even, sometimes I'll talk to my dad and I'll just like, just tell him thank you, you know, for providing such a great musical backdrop for my childhood and adolescence and all the way up until right now. Some of the jazz artists who come from Pittsburgh are people like uh, Ahmad Jamal, Art Blakey, George Benson, Stanley Turrentine. There's a lot of others I'm drawing a blank right now, but there's, those are definitely the, the, the main main ones. I, I knew that I knew that music was going to be my life once I uh, actually started learning how to do it myself. I mean, I, growing up when I was a teenager in high school, I'd always have like tapes. I was always known as the dude with the music. I always had the tapes. Like I remember when uh, it was when, like Common Sense Resurrection came out, first Artifacts tape. You know, things. I was always the music guy, but I was hanging around people. Who were who was who was who were uh, starting to delve into production? Like my man G Man, out he's from Pittsburgh too. He's the one. He's totally responsible for like me getting into the game because like I would go dig with him. He would go hit the record shops and he he we would sit around listen to samples and I you know he would make beats and he noticed that I had an ear for for music and he was like yo you should get you a sampler. So like I ended up getting uh what was my first one? I got an Insonic EPS. Decided in Sonic EPS and some and some records, and then I later graduated to the MPC 2000 XL, which I still use to this day. When people look back at my musical legacy, I want them to feel like I want them to appreciate the musical diversity. I want them to be able to appreciate and have fun listening to it because I had fun making a lot of it. So I want them to feel that same fun vibe and fun vibe that I felt when I was making it. I got into DJing, I was about eight years old. I was, I've, I've been at this for a while. Uh, a local DJ by the name of Slot Jock in Pittsburgh, he was doing a party and he actually let me get up and like blend a couple records. I remember I remember he was playing, this was around the time, 86, that's when like Cameo, Word Up, it hit the streets and he had, I was like blending the records back and forth and I was hooked. I got my first pair of Techniques 1200s back in the early 2000s and that's actually part of how I got my name is like I would when I was starting to DJ around locally I didn't have a car so if some if I had a gig like I'd have to t get a crate of records and like hop on the bus like bus crates that's literally like how I got my name the first mixer I got with my 12s I think was a new mark it was I can't remember the model name but it was a little new mark and it had like the little the, the LED lights that kind of spread off left the right. It was the, the fader was crappy, but you know it, it did what it did. So <laughs> the first 12 inch I bought was Grandmaster Melly Mel and the Furious Five Beach Street. I remember I had gone to see the movie, and right after the movie, my mom had taken me over to the record store, and I wanted to get the whole soundtrack, but she didn't she didn't want to give me the whole soundtrack. She just got me the 12 inch, which was good because there was a track on the flip that wasn't on the soundtrack, so it worked out. First rap album, I'll never forget. The first rap album I ever bought was LL Cool J Radio. It was my birthday and my, my auntie had given me some money and I went straight to the record store. It was Record Hut. I went in there and bought LL Cool J Radio on wax. My favorite record on radio would probably have to be Dangerous. Dangerous, because it was just like, the beat was just crazy hard and LL was just going off. Rick Rubin, killing the production. Or should I say killing the reduction? Because I don't know if you remember the back of the album said, reduced by Rick Rubin which I later learned was um, was an actual term. It wasn't an error because what they did was they reduced the amount of music and melodies and stuff that was in it. He stripped it down to just like the bare bones beats. 